What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Comic Joint. We are a part of the lovely BS Podcast Network. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> Later. Ladies, gentlemen, subscribers, and listeners. Weighing in at a gentleman never asks and a lady never tells. Haven, the Whisper Rain. And her tag team partner, Jason, the Nova Sean Carroll. And you are listening to As the Heel Turns. Hell yeah. What's up, everybody? This is Haven, and me and Jason are back for another episode of As the Heel Turns. And on this week's episode, Jason is itching to discuss a certain topic. Can you tell us what it is? <laughs> we gonna talk about Monday Night Raw, specifically two symbols. Like, you know, we, we are pro SmackDown. We are. But here's the thing. We're gonna discuss two things on Monday Night Raw. And it's the two biggest buzz segments of the week, in my opinion. Do you want to do Roman Cena first? Or do you want to do Alexa? I'm going to just get this Roman Cena thing out of the way because yes. <laughs> <laughs> let me just break this down. For anybody who did not see, they had a contract signing because they're going to fight at no mercy. Why? I'm guessing because Cena's not going to be around shortly after that. And, you know, Kurt called them both out. The table is there. Cena comes out. Cena really starts going in on Roman. He says Roman is scared to fight him. He's not going to come out and sign it, blah, blah, blah. Roman, Roman comes out, he's like, right, right okay, I'm, I'm scared of you, okay. And then Cena calls Roman a bootleg Cena. <laughs> um, There was a point where Roman, I don't even, I went back and watched it, I don't even think he froze. I think, because you know when he, Roman first started talking, he was talking slowly. Yeah. Whereas opposed to John Cena, who talked really fluidly, right? I feel like Roman was going to continue with his slow talking. But then Cena was like, oh, mm, I'll wait. I'll wait for you to spit it out. It's called the promo, son. Like, you have to learn how to do this. And I think that's what got everybody so excited. Because yeah. once Cena said that, Roman, because the crowd started making noise. So Roman looked around at them, not really like, oh, shit, you caught me. But more was like, okay, whatever, guys. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I don't think you forget your lines like that and then come back with a vengeance. Like, Roman came back, bass in his voice, mad aggression, caught Cena a fake-ass bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know. The, now you have fans saying that Cena killed Roman on the mic. He murdered Roman on the mic. Roman ain't shit. I'm like, listen. Damn, they say Roman ain't shit, too? What? Yo, if Roman didn't have that pause... Roman would have been flawless in his promo. Here, here, I got a, I got something for you. What do you I think? Been, I've been thinking about it since Monday. Mm -hmm. Roman, I know how Roman can do promos now. He needs to do promo, and I hate comparing him to The Rock. I really do. But his style is similar. He should be similar to Rock, where The Rock in the beginning, people don't know this. Rock didn't really cut super duper long promos in the beginning. He did mm -hmm. clap back. And Every pro Roman promo that people have loved have been clapbacks. Like someone says something, he has a comeback. Yeah, I think that will that will give him confidence, and then eventually he can cut super long promos. Because like like you said in this one, all his clapbacks, I loved every single clapback he did. Loved it. Right. And here's the thing, people: if you have listened to the show, I'm a huge Cena guy. Like I just am. I love this segment. Not because Cena killed Roman and Roman clapped back. I loved it because of a few reasons. One, Cena's having the time of his life this last he, year. He damn sure is. And uh, Roman cut, in my opinion, the best promo of his life. <laughs> and the thing is, I'm happy for Roman because I don't care what nobody says. Anybody At this stage in Cena's career, if you few with Cena, you coming out looking good. Except for Barry yeah. Corbin. But that's different. <laughs> Listen, that Corbin screwed Corbin. Right. <laughs> but, I mean, he, because the thing is, Cena has a presence. If you fight Cena, you're big news. Like, yep. And the thing is, people say he's always burying people on the mic. He ain't burying people. If he talks crap about you, everyone starts talking about it. 
that means everyone's going to watch your match. Everyone's going to see your physical clap back. Right. And he, he bums, he drums up anticipation. People are like, oh, no, he buried him. Okay, what about The Rock? Rock talked out every single person he ever stepped up to. All Rock did was call people garbage. <laughs> but he made... It, he was, no, I was saying, I meant to say he called everybody garbage. He did. He called them Rudy Pooties and blah, blah, blah. And I know, I know you're tight about what was said. And before we get into that, I'm tight about one thing. What? Things. People kept saying, um, like, I know you said it too, but like, after we talked about it, we, you know, came to understand that it's the same promo from Seen as Always. And I do agree that it's the same promo style as Seen as Always. My thing is that everybody gives the same kind of promos all the time. Right. It, it's the mixture of promos that makes it interesting. Like, when you name the best promo people of all time, Besides Chris Jericho, because he is an anomaly, he doesn't make any sense. <laughs> he breaks the rules. He switches it up every time in the mic, and that's just scary. Um, the best. Like, let's look at I, I let's look at Austin, Rock, and CM Punk. Uh, yeah, with those three, they pretty much cut the same promo for years, all the same every week. Like, I, I told my friend, I, I put up like because I was really arguing with someone. I put up three of Rock's promos. And I was like, when did these promos happen and who is he fighting? And dude couldn't name who's fighting. Because The Rock, I love The Rock. I'm a huge Rock guy. But Rock says the same thing every week. <laughs> Calls somebody a Rudy Pooty, a jabroni, makes a pie joke, a strudel joke, and a candy ass. Rinse, wash, <laughs> eat. But it's good. Oh it's good because of delivery. Delivery is what makes promos good. Not what they say, in my opinion. Um, right. But no, I love this thing because, like, I, I was freaking out because Vince must have been having a damn heart attack in the back. <laughs> Listen, to Yo. fifty, but oh my goodness, they it said, was intense. They said heel turn. I gasped. My thing. I don't personally. I feel like creative might have gave Cena little things to touch on, but I, f- I feel like Cena's one of the few people mm-hmm. who goes out there and, and wings it. Yes. Because I remember, I remember New Day said, um, that's kind of how they are with them. Like, they'll tell them little things to say, but it's usually just them off the top of the head, you know? Yeah. And Cena, who's really going to tell Cena no? Yeah. I don't even think Vince is going to tell Cena no. So, and like you said, Cena's having a time in his life. And my only problem with that is he seems like he's having too much fun in this promo where you should be more serious about it. Yeah. I agree. But other than that, yeah, it was it was very entertaining because it got the fans talking, whether you loved it, hated it, whether you thought, you know, one did good or both, it got everybody talking. And that's ultimately what you want. Exactly. But one thing I will say, one thing I will say is to everybody hating on Roman, like I said, if he didn't have a little pause, it would have been flawless. And secondly, it's almost like the Mayweather-McGregor fight. Mm-hmm. You can't expect someone who's been box- boxing their whole life. You damn right. <laughs> right? To really right. lose, to lose against someone, and this is not their sport. You know what I mean? McGregor is an MMA fighter. It is completely different training and everything but with that in boxing. And it's the same that goes with Cena and Roman. Cena's been doing this for like 15 years, right? right. Roman has been on the main roster for five, five little years. Mm-hmm. And... Roman's character barely picks up a microphone. Cena had a rap gimmick where he always put a promo every single night. Exactly. How can you, you can't compare the two. You just and, can't do it. And to add on to that point, y'all, let's be real. This is John Cena. John Cena is damn good on that mic. For example, The Rock, the King of Smack Talk. Like, that's Mike. I'm a Rock fan. He made the mm-hmm. Rock stutter. He's- right, like he has practice day in, day out. This is his thing, and um, ooh, I don't know this boy's name. I think it's Jaquil, but he said when The Rock was, I mean, he said when Cena was coming up, Cena had a lot of veterans around to help, to mentor him. Yes. Roman, Roman does not have that right now. How many veterans that are good in every area of wrestling are there to help Roman besides Cena? Yeah. yeah, it's really it's been a change in the guard. Like most of the that could help shape them are gone. 
Exactly. This new era has to find like a new groove style because all the old people, not old people, the older generation that have, they figured out all this stuff, they have their niches are either retired or somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So he has to find, he has to wean on his own. Yeah, I don't think it's a fair comparison. And even with Cena's advantage and Roman's disadvantage, Roman still did damn good. So look at everything Roman has done in his five years, his first five years. And look at what Cena did in his first five years. Like, look Ooh. at Roman's, ac Roman's accomplishments. Three years, main event at WrestleMania, retired The Undertaker, eliminated the most people in the Royal Rumble. Just, just so y'all know, Haven just went off script. That's why I got quiet. I'm just saying. I'm just, <laughs> just to name a few. Cena, mm, <laughs> just saying. And, and, I, and I agree. He's done a lot of things. He, he really, really has. I have no... I have nothing against Roman. I think Roman's fine in the ring. Mike Wise, you, you've heard my piece. I think he should do clapbacks. Because mm -hmm. I personally like clapbacks better. John Cena, I do not agree that he sh I don't think he should have he should have battled Cena. Because look, The Miz is like top three best mic workers on earth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah, Miz is really Miz good. Cry. <laughs> the Miz and that's the thing. Guy. It's like you know, you have to be on your shit if you're going to go and battle Cena on the mic. I love AJ Styles, but Cena won every single time. And that's okay. But nobody had anything to say. He what? killed Miz. Well, I can't say he killed Miz because Miz did have a lot of shit to say. But Remember that promo we took a shirt off? I was like, oh my God. <laughs> your shirt off to kill this man. But at the same time, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Cena, no matter who he goes up against, Cena will come out on top just because he's been doing it longer. He's perfected it. And it's it's like his character. You know what I mean? He's very comfortable in that lane. Exactly. Roman, you can tell Roman is still trying to get comfortable on the mic. And if you've seen Roman outside of um wrestling or just in interviews and shit, he's an extremely laid back guy. Mm -hmm. Even when he was on up, up, down, down, he was so laid back. He's one of the the quietest people I've seen on that channel so far. Whereas Cena has this big personality and all of this confidence. I'm not saying Roman don't have confidence, but Cena's like super big personality. Roman is like chill, let's go get a beer type guy. You know what I mean? So to me, my uh, perspective, I feel like he's just getting used to it. It's not his thing. It's not what he's used to, but he's going to do it because he has a job to do. And it's going to take him time to get comfortable. Exactly. And here's another point I was going to make on that to cap it off. People online have been saying, and you got the name right. I was creeping on your Facebook. That's definitely his name. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you made good points. It was in the Yep, I Look Wrestling group. Yeah, I definitely was. Yeah. Anyway, beside the point. Um, <laughs> no, I think it's absolutely positively a good idea to battle Cena because if you look at any of his feuds over the last year or two, he does battle people who are either on his level or lower than him on mic skills, and they get progressively better. Mm -hmm. Like, Miz is already A1, but we've seen the, biz, the Miz's best mic work when he went against Cena. Right. AJ Styles can comfortably talk to him. That's what AJ, he even said to himself, he's like, I wasn't good on the mic, but once I went against Cena, I got way better. You, ha you have no choice. You have no choice. Either that or you get embarrassed. And the side note, you literally have no choice because Cena, apparently, if he feels you are not ready, the world will know you are not ready. So, Corbin. You know what? I got to make a point about that. Because I listened to a show earlier that made a very good point about Cena and burying people. He said, Cena not really buried anyone that was going to be a big name. Because people are like, oh, he buried Wade Barrett. Wade Barrett was terrible on the mic. Like, he was okay on the mic. And wait, wait. I liked when he was bad news, Barry, and he had bad news. Well, yeah, but that was way later. <laughs> it was. It was. Because <laughs> before John Cena said, hey, I don't think this guy has it in him. They were going to make him WWE champion. <laughs> yes. Like, what he does is he'll battle you, and if you don't step up, you should step aside. I agree 100%. Because, like, people are like, oh, he buried Umaga. Umaga was never going to be WWE champion. <laughs> um, let's, because he didn't speak. And he was just an old school right. throwback, stereotypical monster. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, they're they're not going to do that. They always put Cena and people. The only exception to have to that is, is Bray Wyatt. But even with Bray Wyatt, if you don't battle Cena, if you do not battle John Cena, you're not legitimate. He's like the Undertaker. If you've never fought the Undertaker, 
when he was around, you're not legit main eventer. Period. <laughs> right. And the thing is, if you look back, if people are like, if you look at Undertaker. Undertaker won like every feud Undertaker was in. <laughs> and nobody was buried though. Well, except for them buried a lot of matches, but that's something different. Right. And Triple look, Triple H is the opposite. Triple H back in the day was the buried guy. He just he wanted to beat everybody. <laughs> right. Annoyingly. Like I, I don't forgive him for Booker T, but um, none of us do. None of us do. Me and John Tay were talking about, we were talking on a page about, you know, the promo thing. People were like being hard on Roman. And yeah, we cracked jokes about, you know, Roman uh, versus Cena, but we made a good point at the end of that thread. We said, look, if it was me, <laughs> I said I would have had a whole asthma attack. Oh my gosh! Seen over here attacking me. Like, I wasn't nothing. But, and that's the thing with these fans. At least you can admit that. My thing was, how do you think any of these fans would have done, right? You're going against the top guy in the company, right? This Mm -hmm. is not your, this is not your lane. Mic work is not your lane. You're in front of thousands of people who don't like you for no reason. And you know this man is about to eat you alive if you don't step up. You're going to be nervous as hell. And I can guarantee you, I don't even want to say one fan. Not even one fan would have did half as good as Roman did. Exactly. I not man. Look, I'm a shit talker. You know this. Oh, please. <laughs> I would have been crying. <laughs> not a laughter going against John Cena. Right. It's. I don't. I like. I said. I think he did well under the circumstances. He was not bad in any way. Yeah. And everybody, every wrestler has stumbled on the mic. Randy Orton. I forgot who he was in the ring with. He asked that person what was his lines. He did. He I, did. Yeah. <laughs> I think it might have been Seamus, but I could totally be wrong. But it was a while ago. Randy was cutting a promo, forgot his whole line, asked the dude in the ring, what's my line? And then he had to finish. Because here's Seth you Rollins. Know what, you know what I think? Mm-hmm. Thing, you know what I think it is? I think a big part of it is because in the WWE, mic skills are not something that everybody has at all. I like Seth Rollins. I really do. Seth's one of my guys. Mm-hmm. Not great on the mic. He's all right. Like he's not. Oh man, that was the best promo I've ever heard. Or, right. Not, that's the best promo I heard all week. Um, <laughs> but he's good in the ring. I think the thing with Roman is because he is, um, because he is, you know, the guy. I hate saying that. Right. Because he's, you know, that he is, you know, people have eyes on him, so like he has to be good at everything. But like. Him and Seth, in my opinion, have about the same level of mic skills. They're not great, but they're not terrible. They're just they're okay. Yeah, and they, they got different characters, so Seth can be his little asshole self. Right, and when you look at like the Shield, for example, that's why Dean is all talking because Dean can talk. Yeah, that's his thing. Yeah, and that's the that's the biggest thing. Like they have different areas, they have different strengths, different weaknesses. Roman always had the look. He had the look of a good of a champion. While mm-hmm. he was, he had the best look of the shield. Seth had the best entering skill of the shield. While Dean was the best talker, they all covered each other's weaknesses. Very true. And fun fact: Seth Rollins said, um, when he broke up with when the shield broke up, he didn't have no practice on cutting promos. And he was like, when he was so he had to go out there and cut that promo. I think the next night, he said he was like, oh shit, you know, like he he like I feel like. They just throw you out there, like you said. Either you step up or you step aside, and that's literally what happened to Seth. He's like he had to get comfortable. He said he was very nervous, uncomfortable, and he says time goes on, you know, you just get used to it. Yeah, and that's that's the thing. You can even tell, like people have been talking trash about Roman, but like again, I bring up Seth again because I like Seth. I really like Seth. Seth is still trying to find his place on the mic because, like, when people say, you know, uh, this was Roman's best promo, it was. Seth's best promo of his entire run was against Triple H. That night he told him, I just want to forget the day that I, that I, you know, ever met you or something like that. Or he said, no, forget yeah. everything you ever taught me. That was his best promo. Besides that, he doesn't have any good promos. He, doesn't have, he has decent promos. So, like, it depends on your position. It, it, mm-hmm. it, and with, if you look at Seth, remember, when he was in the authority, Triple H did most of the talking. <laughs> Right. He was like their little son. <laughs> he even said in one of the things, I think it was like a shoot interview he was talking about, or somebody was, and they said, yeah, they gave him the authority because they knew he wasn't good on the mic. 
They were just trying to teach him how to be good on it. Mm -hmm. And with Roman, he got the sword and the stick. Dean was fine because Dean could talk already. Seth had the she had the authority backing him. Uh, Roman just kind of tossed out there. Right, and and not even that. Roman don't get the mic every week to even practice. So. And the thing, oh, what I would say, this is obviously somebody totally different. Talking about gender, um, that first promo he cut after he won that, um, I guess it was a battle royal or whatever, yeah. to be the number one contender, and he cut that promo, people were shocked, like, oh, shit, that was really good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then when he started cutting his promos, if it wasn't every week, it was every other week. And then he was on talking smack, like, um, like I think three weeks in a, war, a row before he won the title. And then after he won a title at house shows, he would cut promos. So he is getting the practice. I feel like Roman should be able to get the practice as well, especially if you're pushing him as your next top guy. Yeah. And like I was talking to our good, one of our friends, Van. Like He's a good friend of mine, Van. We, dis we disagree on a lot, but we do agree that like booking for a lot of these people is all over the place. Ugh, tell me about it. And uh, I made a point to him. I said that one thing about gender is no matter how he comes out of this this run, he will at the very least be an uh, upper card, if not main event heel. Yeah. Which proves that they can make one whenever they really, really want to. They just fucking lazy. They're just lazy. Because the thing is, they realize the best thing to a heel nowadays is mic work. Right. And he need, and he, and man can cut a promo. My God. Mm -hmm. he can the, only, the only thing I don't like, like, it's not him. It's just, you know, the the foreign heel who has oh, to, yeah. America hates me or America is trash. I mean, that is, it's run to the ground, but at the same time, you see it works because they always mm -hmm. will chant USA at you. It, and, like, the part, that, the part that people always say, that needs to be done away with, and I, I get that it does, and I agree that it does. Well, like when they had that celebration where that lady was singing the national anthem for her country, why were they booing? <laughs> She's not saying America sucks. She's just singing her national anthem. Right, but you know these dumbass fans. Or when they just chant, they chant USA in a match between. I think it was two people who weren't American. Like it was Jinder and Shinsuke. They were chanting USA. I was like, who are you chanting for? Right, <laughs> like Nakamura probably looking like, well, did y'all forget? I'm not. I'm not from here either. Like I, that's I, how. That's how dumb wrestling fans are. I'm just saying. Like, I love wrestling fans, but we could be pretty, pretty ridiculous. Um, like that post. <laughs> it's great to be a wrestling fan, but it's hard sometimes. It's hard, man. Like, when you find those good wrestling fans, come on. Like, those be your friends for life. But when you got those just complete assholes, those are the worst types. Look, you and I, this is... I made a comment yesterday because on SmackDown, we'll get to it. They had a pretty, it was a pretty okay match. I mean, a pretty okay, like, I like how they present and they try to develop the entire SmackDown women roster. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, I was like, look, this is why SmackDown Live's division is light years ahead of Raw's. And please explain to me why they're light years ahead of Raw. What happened on Raw? <laughs> Crazy. So Alexa had a rematch against Sasha Banks for the Raw Women's title. They had a really good match. But Sasha got pinned and lost her title. Now, the reason why this sucks, everybody, is because Sasha had the belt for eight days. Eight days. I just don't understand. <laughs> she has never... First of all, she's a four-time women's champion, and she's never had a successful title defense. Meaning every time she won that belt and that person got their rematch, she lost it. And it doesn't the, make sense because when she's not the champ, she don't lose. <laughs> right. The most I think the, the most days she held the belt was 27 days. That is sad. That is extremely sad. And I'm tired of Alexa Piss. But the one good thing that came out of that was Nia Jax turned on Alexa. And I believe they're going to feud. <laughs> yeah. And see, here's the thing. I got a couple comments about that. Number one, my friend Joey. Um, <laughs> he definitely. You met Joey? Yeah. Definitely. He definitely said that she might be like the Mick Foley of women's vision. I was like, what's that mean? 
and he explained it to me, where it's super popular, but they're not champ long. I, I thought back, because Mick's like my second favorite wrestler of all time. Yeah. But like he wasn't champ very long ever. He has three reigns, and none of them none of them equal to hundred days. Wow. Like together, they're not hundred days. That sucks. <laughs> first title, I think his first or second title reign was one day. And that's su- that's what ta- that's what Sasha's next title reign is gonna be. One day. <laughs> one day. <laughs> See, I was scared it was I I remember I said it last week. I was scared because I was like, why are they doing the re- Nowadays, maybe these rematch like a week later, the titles be changing hands. Right. <laughs> like, I was scared. That's why with Tazawa, he like, had a rematch at SummerSlam. I was like, oh, he's going to lose it. He had it for six days. What's up? Like, I don't get it. And the thing is, I made a joke about this to you earlier. Um, the reason that I think they're doing all this hot shot is because when Oscar does come up in six weeks, I think it is. I think they want her against the heel if she wins it off, too. So I do believe they gave it to Alexa, not to give it to Nia, to give it to Asuka. I'm assuming is what they're going for. And when she wins the belt, she will hold it until we collect Social Security. <laughs> so uh, She's holding on to that shit forever. But you know what I think would be cute? If um, Asuka gets the belt and no one can beat her, and the person to finally beat her is Bailey because, you know, she took Bailey's NXT title. So for Bailey to take the women's title for her and be the one to beat her, I think that would be cute. But mm-hmm. I doubt it's going to happen because where is Bailey and what was they doing with her before she left? Who? <laughs> right. Um, no, you're right. right. You're, you're absolutely right because I, it would be cool. But like I was talking to Van earlier, if I wanted to see that, if I wanted her to win it, I want her to stack up some impressive wins. I want her to come back. I, perfect ideal situation for me is when Oscar comes in, she, she feuds with Alexa Bliss, all that good stuff. But during them feuding or whatever, I want Sasha to turn on Bailey. I don't want it to be over the title like a lot of people. Because here's the thing. we need Bailey needs a really excellent feud to be built back up. Mm-hmm. Because right now, she got beat clean. I'm, I'm mad that everybody who's super popular at Raw keeps getting beat clean. <laughs> Crazy. Like, when Nia was at her peak, 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 peak popularity, she got beat clean. I just don't understand. Sasha it's like, clean. What, are, what are they doing to these people? Like, were they, like I, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of invincible or super undefeated streaks, but you know, peak popularity, you shouldn't be taking no L's. Right. Not your peak. The thing is, I'm worried about Sasha because if Nia and Alexa are going to feud, where does that leave Sasha? You know what's sad? I already know who she, she's going to be feuding with. I figured it out. Who? Who? Right. Let me tell you why. <laughs> because Emma's whole gimmick now is she started the women's revolution. <laughs> yeah, I've noticed. She had a whole Twitter match. Yes, people. A Twitter match. Annoying. Over it, it, people are like, what do you mean a Twitter match? Like the winner of the match wins at Twitter. <laughs> like, it's foolish. And she beat Mickey James, who that makes me the match. Mickey James is a whole legend. Right. Like y'all don't know this, but Mickey James is my favorite female wrestler of all time. Uh huh. And I don't talk about her because as soon as she went to Raw, I was like, man, did she just gonna do nothing? Did she just nothing? There's nothing with her. Nothing. And you know what? To that with her? Nothing. She was in, a, in squash match. Because I have no problem with Legends putting over people. That's mm-hmm. fine. Legends should be back just to put over people. But a squash match? That's a shame. Nikki James was the original. Like, the I don't realize this. In the 2000s, I like Trish Stratus and Lita. I do. But they they both started off as valets. And, and mm-hmm. Trish Stratus was garbage for years. Yeah. And she became she became I don't want to say she became a great wrestler. She became a decent wrestler. Decent. I feel like in her time she became a, a good wrestler. Cause I'm sorry, I'm gonna be that person. To me, Lita was not that great. If she what? had she had the moonsault. And her moonsault was ugly. Yeah. She wasn't so, she wasn't great. I, <laughs> she wasn't. I like Trish. When Trish learned how to wrestle, I would have picked Trish over Lita any day. I just like Lita's style much better. Fair enough. That's, that's a good, good point. 
and I say this because when Mickey James showed up, I was gra- I was happy because Mickey James could out wrestle both of them with blindfold on. Yes. And she came in, and people were like, "Who just Mickey?" Mickey James came my favorite because she is one of the first wrestlers to come out the gate being talented. Right. Molly Holly, too. I really loved Molly Holly. Molly did, too. But they never gave Molly no shine, sadly. They never played her. And, like, people say China. And, like, I, I like China, but China wasn't very technical. China was one of those, like, I have a great physique, and I'm going to beat some people down. Which is great. That's perfectly fine. Right. But, like, technical prowess, uh, Mickey James. Because if you watched her in Oscar, dude, she still got that move. She still got the moves, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was a good match, actually. Cool match I've seen in a long time. It was good. And, yep, and uh, we say this about the ladies because the May Young Classic came back this week. Mm. Let me tell you something, guys. I watched. It's like almost. It's like four hours, sixteen matches. I watched it straight. I was so tired of wrestling that day. I don't know how I made it through. <laughs> Girl, I don't know how you made it. I had to take a break. <laughs> I couldn't because I was like, yo, I don't want nobody to spoil it for me. I need to see it for myself. And I, I loved it. Um, ooh, I can't even think of their names right now. It's hard. It was, you want to know their names, but it's so hard. It was three matches that I really loved. I know Piper Nevin. She had, I think, my second favorite match. And um, oh jeez, I wrote it on Facebook. Me, yeah, me, yeah. It was me and him, and um, yeah, I can't remember the other one said Landra. Oh, I can't. Sorry, Sarah y'all. Logan. These names. It's Sarah Logan and whoever she fought. They had my favorite yeah. match. Yeah. Then it was mm-hmm. Piper, and then it was me and him. Those are my three favorite matches. And see, that's the thing, yeah, y'all. The reason we don't know all these names is because we binge watched it before Raw, right. <laughs> So we watched like eight hours because you know Raw's like seven hours long. <laughs> so like we watched all of it. So we, we're trying to digest. We we had a couple weeks to digest the names. Mm-hmm. We had women of different shapes, different sizes, techniques. Y'all, I fell in love with Jazzy, the one that big like brawler chick. Even though yeah. she didn't win, I was like, look at her physique. My God. I thought she would win honestly, but she did not. But the girl who beat her, I don't mind her. I don't either. I was like, I actually, I like her look. She's cute. Yeah, she she looks like an actual underdog. Right, very believable at that too. Because like when I saw her wrestle, I was like, I know because some underdogs nowadays, like, oh, I see you. You you're probably, you know, you're probably really terrible underdog. But no, with her, I feel like she could do it. Yeah. But but like she just be, the person they put her against was perfect because she was getting wrecked. She damn sure was. Oh, she kept drilling her with those punches. I was like, God. She has a family. <laughs> right. She has a family. Oh, side note. I'm so sorry. Kyrie Sane. She had um oh. I don't even want to say her match was one of my favorites because we just knew she was winning. But that oh. elbow drop. Oh. oh. Oh my god. That is something of such beauty, precision. It's the best. Please please describe it to these people. Bro, she goes up to the top, and the way she set the girl up, I was like, how she won't even do this? But she goes up to the top, and she plays to the crowd, you know, she touches the elbow, everybody's losing their mind. It's like she jumps in the air, she brings her legs up, and just smashes you with her elbow. Like, it's insane. It looks, yeah, I've never seen an elbow drop like that. Pure perfection. It was absolutely breathtaking. It was, it was absolutely breathtaking. Like, I don't know what they're going to do with the, these participants. We've had rumors and whatnot, but, like, I, I don't care. I just want at least some of them to be somewhere because they were fantastic. Yo, that honestly, double drop, though. Right. Mm-hmm. I think it's 32 of them, right? And um, after the first round, they cut it down, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Um, I feel like they should hire everyone who – Made it to the second round should get hired because, but then damn, I like some of them who didn't make it too. I know, like when Jazzy lost, I was just like, no, <laughs> because she has a good look. She looks like she could just wreck anybody, and like nobody under 150 pounds was touching her. 
<laughs> and you know what? You know what I want the the um the the women's division to be. Cause you know you got everyone's pretty small and petite. You know you got Nia Jax. She's really like the only monster. You got Tamina, kinda, but like let's be honest, right now no one's really worried about her. And yeah. you have Charlotte. Charlotte's not really a monster. She's just bigger than everybody. I would like the women's division to have more than one monster. You know what I mean? That way you have a little bit of everything. Ooh, just like you have. Yes. Right. I want that. Jazzy is a beast. Um, like you said, you got Nia Jax. You can have Piper Nevin. She's a bigger girl. Um, what was that? Uh, it's two other girls. Uh, something Martinez the four and girl? and her too. Like they they don't look. They're not big, but they have that strong look. You know, like yeah, they need to yeah. like have a blend of everything. Like you don't you know this, but they may not know this. I I honestly watch all women matches because that's like the highlight of this for me like here's the thing y'all I'm gonna go there's a show called TNA <laughs> and like one thing I honestly believe that TNA started the women's revolution <laughs> it's possible I'm not even gonna deny it it's very possible because when they had the knockouts back in the day we had we had the women tearing it up I was like, Yo, this Kim. Is they were tearing it they were absolutely tearing up like I, I really would watch TNA just to see that. Mm-hmm. Even now, nowadays, still Rosemary. Rosemary is one of my favorite women wrestlers today. Yeah, she's pretty good. I've seen some of her stuff. Did you hear about that? What happened with her, bro? When I heard about it, it upset me so much because for excuse me, it was Sexy Star who did it. She basically dislocated Rosemary's shoulder or something, right? Yeah, purposely. Because she had beef with someone else. No, Not even the girl you had beef with. Why would you even do that? Like, she's despicable. And thankfully, she getting blackballed by, like, everybody. It's good. Because wrestling, you have to trust the person you're going up against, basically, with your life. You know what I mean? Because one wrong move, it might be over for you, sadly. You know, you've seen a lot of wrestlers injured. Not a lot, but you've seen wrestlers injured by one wrong move. And you're going to be in there with somebody who... Would purposely hurt you? No. Not purposely. Somebody, somebody needs to kick that ass in real life. Right. And like I'm talking, I love the I love the Twitter response. Like I like Twitter for one reason. The response from the fans is always great. It was um, mm-hmm. a lot of them were like um Road Dog, for example. He said, Who did this again? Let me know so I can make sure she never gets here again. She never comes here. Mm-hmm. Right. And like I'm talking a ton of promotions canceled dates with her, banned her, blackballed her, as they should. Right, they should. That's t- that's really disgusting behavior. Like I heard um, you know, Sasha and Alexa don't like each other, but you don't ever let that come into your professional you know, once the cameras is o- cut off and your match is done, you can go back to hating her, but you don't do no shit like that in the ring. Right. A perfect example. A couple years ago, Booker T and Batista didn't like each other. They didn't wreck each other in the ring. What they did, they went to they went to a back room, beat the hell out of each other, and then went back to work. There you go. Get that shit out your system in the back, and then go work. Work that crowd. Look, Booker T showed him some Harlem heat. Right. He's from Brooklyn, right? Or something. No, he's not from Brooklyn. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, I'm from New York. I just assumed. <laughs> Dude, he whooped that ass. <laughs> like, yeah, but he ain't no booker from the streets, man. He don't play that, sucker. Right. And you see the the looks Booker be giving Michael Cole? He going to knock Michael Cole out one day. <laughs> right. He, he, Michael Cole don't even know. He lucky he wasn't there this week. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. He went home can to restart. Can I say one thing? Two things, actually. Mm-hmm. Number one. Hell yeah. I loved Elias in NXT because Elias is great. He's, he's so an ass, ass, yo. He's, he's, he's trying not to. He's trying not to laugh when he's doing his promos. He's really trying not to. Mm-hmm. The fans, he's so over. It makes no sense. The men don't even wrestle, and he's yeah. so over. Right. He, he, but that's good. Now he gotta just have some great matches. Mm-hmm. And my second point is. As much as I like the competitors, I'm sick and tired of Bray Wyatt fear. Yep. I hated it. I'm done. 
my the only way they can save this feud for me is if I don't even have nothing specific. They just have to make it more intense. Like make me care about it because I don't care about it. Exactly. At all. A friend of mine said earlier, he was like, What if they have, you know, Finn actually bring him at the club? Which I'm I'm trying to Google who these people are that keep talking about. But uh, Wow, you're an ass. <laughs> And then Bray gets him some backup. It doesn't have to be the, the Wyatt family, but if it's with Wyatt, it's probably going to be that. Um, right. Put together a team or something for him so they can have, like, a Wyatt versus club thing. And that would be cool. It would help out a bunch of ties. True. My only, my only hang-up is, like, my friend made a point. I hate to agree with him. Bray Wyatt's a super interesting character, but he's far more interesting when he has a group of people. And yeah. he also made a thing about Finn. Finn's super interesting, but he's super, super interesting when he has a group of, uh, you know, a club around him, you know, a group of people that he's leading. That would be cool. I, I love, but you know, I'm in part, I'm I'm biased because I love faction warfare. Yeah, clearly. I, I like two groups beat each other down, you get in the middle, you a casualty. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. I, I, I'm going to give them another chance because they're probably going to fight again at No Mercy. And that's like four weeks away. 2017 or 18? <laughs> Listen. <laughs> it is on September 24th, I believe. And that's a far away. So you have plenty of time to build this feud up. Make us care. Make us their, care. Their problem is with SummerSlam. SummerSlam was so close. Right. That they just rushed it. Like, with SummerSlam and, like, the Big Four, I think they should have, like, no pay-per-views leading up to the Big Four. Like, at least a month before the Big Four to like build up because this whole two week thing is not working right and that's what bothers me about um finn and bray mm -hmm. and that's what bothers me about the whole gender nakamura thing because honestly if baron didn't do those tweets they wouldn't even be feuding because you know corbin was supposed to nakamura was supposed to win and corbin was going to cash in and him mm -hmm. and nakamura would feud but since all of that happened with Corbin, they changed everything. So now you have Jinder and Nakamura kind of just thrown together. And it's like, okay, so now they have time to build up their feud um, for their paper. When is their pay-per-view? Uh, it's right after that. And, and the, I, I know you said that, but the, 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 the kicker is I think they wanted to go with the Baron thing for multiple reasons. The main one being Hell in the Cell's coming up. That's a SmackDown pay-per-view this year. Mm. I think that's the next one. They wanted a long feud to end at Hell in the Cell. And I think that would have been Nakamura and bearing yeah so they had a plan it's just it got super derailed now there's like oh my god we need something let's go figure it out yeah that sucks i don't i hope the new day like i love the new day and i love uh the usos you know that listen hell i know <laughs> yeah that's it that them and usos need to be done after this Put them in a cell match, have a good old tag team cell match, and wrap it up. That will be amazing. Like I don't doubt that at all. But it got to be the last one because what I want to see is Usos. And if they had a feud with other people, that would be four tag teams being showcased on SmackDown. Mm -hmm. And Chance. See, I think exactly. I think that team is going to debut because. There's the fashion files. I think the reason they're stretching out is two reasons. One, to get you know them some more time to get super more over because those things are hilarious. Um, mm -hmm. And to introduce a new team, and that new team is going to be you know because they're trying to rebuild that division. People are like you know SmackDown tag team division is bad. It's not bad. It's just they don't got a lot of teams. And like, at all. They, Yo, what is that? Talk a little bit more about Something that. clearly opened up on my damn. That's crazy. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, I was looking for Hell in a Cell. It's October eighth. Oh man, that's not far. That's like two weeks after. If two weeks, that's about two weeks after. Uh, no mercy. Um. I love that voice. No mercy. <laughs> but um. Yes, so SmackDown, they have, what's that, a good five, six weeks to build up feuds. Mm -hmm. Build up feuds. They have no excuse to make any feud be trash. Raw, you only got about four. Mm -hmm. Make us care about Finn and Bray. 
make us care about whoever is going to feud with Sasha, whoever is going to feud with Alexa. Yeah. This shit is whack. My, my thing is, honestly, you know what's really weirding me out? Raw got like three hours, but like as of right now, I think SmackDown has more actual feuds going on. They do. And they have, like, all of their feuds actually mean something. Hon- honestly, anything that SmackDown does is kind of important. So you got the U.S. T- champion. Whatever AJ is doing is important. Mm-hmm. Kevin Owens is obviously kind of, I feel like him and Shane are going to end up in a feud. Mm-hmm. But Kevin Owens is still important. They're trying to keep Baron Corbin um relevant. Obviously Nakamura and Jinder. Um, mm. they're trying to keep Rusev and Randy relevant. They got the women. They, they're trying to do something with Tamina. You're mm. trying to do something with Tamina. Like they are trying out here. What is Raw doing? Where's Alicia Fox? And that's the thing. A lot of people, say, you know, a lot of people have been saying, you know, a lot, I hear a lot of people who jumped off the bandwagon, like you know. SmackDown's just doing this stuff, you know, they're not doing as much exciting stuff, like, because they're trying to build the people back up. Yeah, you have to build. Raw took their stars, and now SmackDown has to make new ones. Right, right now, what, like, and, and to, to argue the opposite point, look at this, like, Miz, up until now, had no feud. He was, he's the Intercontinental Champion, just hanging out. Right, and on SmackDown, the Miz was the man. He was must-see, and he's at must-see TV. That yeah. was Miz, and every week Miz was there cutting a fantastic promo. His feuds, they was long as shit, and they were good. The one he had with Dean, the one he had with Dolph, long right. and good as hell. And that's the thing. I made a point to somebody the other day, and I said this. I was like, the Miz on Raw right now is no better than he was three years ago hosting the Miz TV. And that's a shame. Because what are they using for? Every Miz TV that he's done is to get over somebody that he is not in a feud with. Right. The only good thing they did was give him the Miz Taraj. Yeah. And even still, they gave him dudes who are not doing nothing, and that's good and all, but they need to start feuding people. Or, um, and otherwise, it's just a group of people who aren't doing nothing. Right. Cause, I mean, and it sucks. If you can move the whole Miz Taraj to SmackDown, move them back. I will guarantee you. The Miz and his crew would be top notch players. Oh yeah, exactly. Because they have a they have a great thing going on. Because I don't know if you saw yet the Marine Five thing. I still haven't seen it. My girl, Bo, I didn't even know Bo Dallas was the main bad guy. Like I was watching, Bo Dallas did good. Wow. Because I was like, oh, he's a henchman, whatever. And then I can't watch the movie. He's in a lot of scenes to be a henchman. Oh, that's cool. He's the guy. <laughs> Do say he's the guy. Oh, I loved it. Bo Dallas, man. And he Slater got a little shine in there too. And it's and you know what? Bo Dallas is not a bad wrestler. You saw him in NXT, you would know that. Curtis Axel, he's not bad. He's the son of Mr. Perfect. Like, why are they treating him like this? And it's weird because I didn't uh, I don't know if you knew this. It's like a weird fun fact, but like uh Mr. Perfect or Mr. Perfect. Curtis Axel. They use him to like when they have legends coming back or like somebody coming back from injury, they use him to train with them. Wow, that's cool. Because he is so good in the ring. Like, he's just, he's just really good in the ring that they, they trust him to be able to help people rehab or get back in ring shape. And look what they do with him on TV. Nothing. Bunch of nothing. I mean, it's, at least he's on TV every week, but at the same time, you're not feuding with nobody. You're looking like a bum. And, and that's the difference between Raw and SmackDown. Raw took their SmackDown stars and did absolutely nothing with them. Only thing they did something with is Dean, and that was just until now. That's very recent. SmackDown <laughs> took Raw's people. They took your jobber. <laughs> they took Raw's jobber. Like, it's two different <laughs> words now. And they made him a freaking world champion. I hope y'all hear me loud and clear. Mm. They made him a world champion. They gave him two little buddies to solidify his healness. You going to help me cheat to win. They gave him a bomb ass entrance. Yo, he got so many colors in his trunks. Not every wrestler changes their colors like he does. He's got the he's got one of the best entrances in the game right now. Right. And he got a whole bunch of different colored trunks. He cuts better promos than half the people on Raw. You know what I'm saying? Like, they they built this man up in such a small amount of time. And he's hit 100 days 
as world champion. Which people people don't understand. In today's day and age, that is a forever. That's Dean, a long time. Dean was only champ for 84 days, I believe. Roman has actually yet to have a reign that's 100 days. Right. And it's, it's really hard. Like, in the last, like, year or so, the only people who've reached 100, in the last couple years, the only people who've reached 100 days as champ is I believe AJ Styles and Seth. That's it. Everybody else is less than 100 days. Oh, and, and that's oh, crazy. And, and Kevin Owens. I forgot. <laughs> oh, yeah. His title reign was trash, though. Sorry. But, um, forgive me. <laughs> but yeah, he's, he reached 100 days, and people, like I said, he, like he said, he was on Raw as a bum. And then he came to SmackDown, and a week later, he was number one contender. And he beat people like AJ and Sammy and Luke Harper and um, what's this guy's name? Randy <laughs> Nakamura. <laughs> this is what SmackDown does. They make people stars, and Raw literally ruins them. And that's so sad. And it's not even like an, and it's not an opinion. Let me split some facts for you, okay? Do your thing. I know people who are hardcore Bray Wyatt fans. And almost none of them are happy with it being a Raw. They were, like, so excited for the Finn rivalry. And since they just bumbled it, they were just like, okay, I want this to be over. Right. Finn. I know people who are hardcore Finn people. And they're just like, what are they doing with him? Like, what did he just fight? This is a boring feud. You got the Hardys. The Hardys. Free show. How do you do that? The Hardys? The Hardys. The, yo, fans wasn't even in the building yet. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like, don't get it twisted. I will give Raw the props. They do make an interesting main event. They do. They got the 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 thing that Raw has is art. They're like super like the main event are always really, really well done. Mm-hmm. But if you ain't the main event, they don't care about you. <laughs> right. At because, all. Like we were joking about Samoa Joe, but like I Samoa Joe to me is not a main event yet. Like I love Joe, but they don't treat him like a. And it sucks. Like to be like, oh, he main event SummerSlam. No, no, no. He was involved in a main event with <laughs> Ron, Roman, and Brock. It, it's, it's very different. You saying he was an afterthought, huh? Well, I'm, all I'm saying is he got put down one at five a month before, and that's a shame. And. How often, how much of the time he spent that match? Like he wasn't in that match long. It was Braun versus Brock. That's what it was. Right. Joe was just kind of there. Like he did some cool moves here and there, but he was just kind of there. It sucks though. It really sucks. And like I know when people are like, "What about SmackDown?" They, they bumble some people. Look, the only people that we bumbled honestly is Dolph Ziggler. But don't nobody care about Dolph Ziggler. Damn. Dolph for years. <laughs> Dude said, don't nobody care about Dolph. <laughs> no. No. I like Dolph. Like, around 2015, I'm like, man, he could, he just got to get that title off the Miz, and yo, he got it. And in the past two years, Dolph, no, they've done nothing with Dolph. Dolph just here. <laughs> he really is just here. That's sad. He, you beat him. to It, it used to be Dolph was like, you beat Dolph, your main event. Now you beat Dolph, your mid card. <laughs> Dude said he a mid card. It sucks. And like, and I remember people were like talking, and like, I love the Titus brand. People were talking big game. They were like, oh, well, on Raw, we got Titus brand doing this, this, this with um, Cruz. I ain't seen Cruz wrestle a match since Braun Strowman. <laughs> right. Like, what's going on? Poor Tazawa won, the, won his, you know, the Cruiserweight title and then immediately lost it. And what, then- what? How many days later? Six. <laughs> Painful. And, and you know what they did? Now, one of their, they're almost their number one contender for a title is Enzo Amore. <sighs> y'all got the cruiserweight. Like, if y'all don't watch 205 Live, shout out to Justin, because Justin was talking about this. 205 Live is a good show if you like wrestling. Right. He and do be, he be repping for 205 Live. Right. I, I'm a rep. For the mid card, I'm a rep 205 Live. Okay. Y'all gonna have Enzo run through all the 205 Live to face Neville? Why? Stupid. He Just better. to lose? Because he, he better not beat Neville. I He better not. I'm done with that whole show. He beats Neville. 
Austin Aries couldn't beat Neville, but but Izzo and Moore, you know what that means? You know what that actually means? Think about it. What? Izzo loses to everybody. He does. And their excuse is he's smaller than them. Okay. So what you tell me is everybody in the in the 205 crew, in you know, that little setting, they're really good unless they fight somebody who's big. Is what you're saying. <laughs> and that's a problem because a lot of people in the in the heavyweight division aren't heavyweights. Sammy isn't over 205. Finn isn't over 205. He's not. That's true. And so they are, I mean, gender tall, but he like 220. <laughs> Wait, I don't know how, how much Sam, well, let me check Sammy right now. I think Sammy is a loose, he just made it. But Finn definitely is like 190. For no, sure. he's like, no, Finn is actually, if, I'm not, if memory serves, he should be like 175. Finn ain't much bigger than me. Um. <laughs> muscle weighs more than body fat, and Finn is muscled the though. fuck out. Just I'm saying. Not I'm not I didn't say that you was, but he got those muscles. Sammy is 212. See, that's not much. That's seven pounds. Enzo was two. I mean, yeah, he's not that much. He's not that far from. Finn is 190. I told you. And I knew his birthday. Mm-hmm, I knew it. Oh, you know what happened with Finn? When he was when he got an injury, he put on a couple extra pounds of muscle. I see you. Shit, he might have. And I think Jinder's like 130 something. But yeah, he's tall. He's like he's really lean. Yeah, I'm gonna get like Jinder one day. But before I get to Jinder, I gotta work my way up first. I gotta look like a Baron Corbin first. Listen, <laughs> ew. Ew. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh I got a better body than Baron Corbin. That's sad. I don't do nothing but sit on the couch. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness! They roasted Baron this week. Like Baron was shit this week. Man, this week only this week. <laughs> Dude, when Natalia was like, "I'm no, I'm gonna make you the Baron Corbin of this division." <laughs> like she shitted on his his entire existence. Oh wait, can we, since Baron Thor, since Baron Corbin is an afterthought, I'm gonna skip him and go to the next thing. Um, Thank you. Thank you. So. So definitely what made me laugh was Kevin Owens when he, he came in the ring and threw on the red shirt. <laughs> like, who does Kevin Owens think he is? <laughs> I was dying. He's crazy. And Sammy was looking like, are you serious? <laughs> and then they say he just, he just left, got in his car and left. <laughs> Yo, I can't deal with Kevin Owens at all. Like, he really was on some shit. Dude, he was cutting a heel promo, not on Shane. He was cutting a heel promo on SmackDown. <laughs> Right, he just was, yo, he was done. He was like, listen, I'm going to talk my shit, and I'm out. <laughs> this is great. But it's, it's shades of when AJ was talking smack, because AJ was like, well, maybe I should go to Raw. And I'm like, oh, oh, come on, AJ, don't leave us. <laughs> I would say <laughs> my favorite Shane AJ moment was honestly after when AJ came back and apologized for being a jerk. Because he was like, AJ, he was like, Shane, I don't want to leave. This is my show. And they shook hands. <laughs> Because remember, 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 Haven, SmackDown Live is the house that AJ, the AJ built. Thank you. <laughs> he did. He really did. He carried that show on his back. 110% he did. <laughs> Dude, because, look, how much does AJ weigh? He's like 218. No. Him, AJ, AJ, Seth, and Dean are around the same weight. No. AJ and Seth are like. I'll, I'll give you. A, I'll tell you right now, but a thousand percent sure. Listen, that's my fucking baby. Like, what are you talking about? What man? That guy, he got some serious muscle on his ass, then. Cause um, but AJ is not that lean. Like, if you look at him, he's not like like Finn is like super cut. But AJ, oh, he used to be super cut. But AJ's not a hundred like that cut up. He got meat on him. Mm, I love his body. I'm so sorry. That's true because, like, I remember AJ back in the day when he was a TNA, he wasn't big. He was my size back in the day. Now he's like, he like Durant, Daniel Bryan. He's like stocky. <laughs> yeah, hold on, my computer's working super slow. What's... I told you, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> he's two eighteen. <How? laughs> I don't think that you know your weights as much as you think you do. How? I, apparently, look, I'm the fun fact when it comes to dates and stuff. And like numbers, you the fun fact with weights, birthdays, and birthdays. Yup. Look, yep, Seth is two seventeen. But you don't know my birthday. Hashtag. Listen, I think I do know your birthday. You don't. 
I think I do. What is it? Go ahead, say it. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna put me on the spot, but what I think I know. <laughs> it's in May. Mm, wrong. Damn, April. It, I, it's either April or May. I knew that, but I, I mm. Matter of fact, I think it's the, it's the, is it the ninth or the eighteenth? Ooh, you got it. It's the ninth. Hmm. Woo! Yours is wait, hold up. Yours is March third. Hey, it is. I'll be honest. With you, I definitely looked it up while you're talking. You asshole. Clearly. <laughs> Like, I wrote it down. Oh, let me write this down. Let me get you a nice gift for your birthday. <laughs> Check you year. out. Yeah, yeah. You see? See? There we go. But uh, back on topic, <laughs> I'm going to say this one thing, though. I, I have not given up on Rusev and Randy. I haven't. It might give us something good. It might. It, it may be. It Maybe. Might. It's SmackDown. I, I, I'm going to give it a shot. <laughs> they might. Maybe. I'm going to tell you this right now, though. I'm going to tell you this right now. I guarantee a Survivor Series, we're getting an interpromotional match, and I want to see the tag team champions versus the tag team champions. Right. Your buddy on the mid-card said that earlier today, and I want to see it. I mean... It don't, it don't have to be for a belt. I just want to see the match. Yeah. I don't know how it worked if it was for um belts for belts, but... That would be a fantastic. It got to be the Usos versus Dean and Seth, though. Don't I don't want to oh, see the New Day versus them. I don't want to see the New Day. But no, I don't want to see that. <laughs> because the thing is, Dean people be, people be ragging on Dean, but let me just tell you right now about Dean. Dean is one of the people that if he works a fast style, it's going to be a barn burner match. It's going to be fantastic. He works. Mm -hmm. He can't work with slow dudes. He's got to work with fast dudes. Yeah. Because him and AJ, people underestimate him and AJ. Him and AJ put on damn good matches. Yeah, no, I did. I love. I used to um watch their um TLC match a lot. It's really good because Dean what? just needs a good opponent, and they just give him opponents that work slow. He's not good with slow opponents because mm -mm. he has one gear. Go <laughs> and uh, him versus the Usos who always go in full speed. Oh, that's gonna be a classic. <laughs> right, it's gonna be. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. Like I want to see them. I want to see the Usos versus the Hardys one day. Look. They Those are dream matches right there. Right. I'm, you know what? I, we've been ragging on Raw, but I think I told you this before. If they can give me this one match, I will forgive Raw for everything. <laughs> you give me a 20-minute mm. John Cena versus Samoa Joe, Woo. I'll forgive you for everything. I'll for forgive everything? you everything. I will forgive you for what you did to Joe a month ago. <laughs> I forgive you for everything you've done to Bray Wyatt. I'll even forgive you for the monstrosity of everything you've done with Sasha for the last two years. I can't forgive that. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said it. I was like, I wonder if she go. No, no. Okay, no. I have to because I want to see. That's my dream match. People were like, you don't want to see. Um, they were naming other matches. I was like, nah. I don't care about. Those will be good matches, but I. Since John Cena got really hot on fire, like y'all understand, if you if you mirror John Cena and Samoa Joe, Joe was killing independence independence while Cena was killing the WWE at the same time parallel. Mm -hmm. Like y'all, nobody was watching TNA when I was watching it. Where Samoa Joe had the best matches of his life against Kurt Angle. Yo, like, Joe really was doing his thing. Oh my! When they had the, they had a match that was it was an all titles match. <laughs> When Joe, I think, I believe Joe won. I cannot remember. He won. He didn't, if he didn't win that match, he won the rematch or something like that. He mm -hmm. was X Division champion, the world champion, the tag team champion. He did everything. They put all the belts on him at once. <laughs> that That's insane. Draped. He was draped in gold. <laughs> And he, I don't know why they treat him, like, I wouldn't say they have ruined him yet, but I know that they can, and I hope they don't, because Joe is everything that Brock should be, and, and Brock, Brock is done to me, Brock, I don't give two shits about him, he's good for a funny suplex city bitch, but other than that, <laughs> no. See, here's what it is, I figured out what the problem with Joe is, and it has a little bit, this is the main thing, the problem with Joe. Joe is great. What 
is wrong with Joe right now is, look, he's got people. Remember, I said Raw is top heavy. Yeah, he's not gonna get. They gonna give Roman's gonna get the spotlight before him. Braun's gonna get the spotlight before him. Brock's gonna get the spotlight before him. And John Cena's gonna be before him. He's far back in that pecking order. And, and it and, sucks because he's so he's so good. Him and Miz are the best talk. Well, and John Cena are the best talkers on there. When it comes to in ring, he's one of the best too. It's just at a time where hate to say it, <laughs> it <laughs> came in where Braun was like, people are like, man, Braun's over. Let's go for this. Man, Roman's getting a crowd reaction we want. Let's go for this. Hey, Brock, let's have Brock work more often. Cool. You know what? Let's bring John Cena back over here. Now shine any of those guys. Right. They really they really trying to make Raw something special though. They're trying. They're trying. They're trying. My thing is if they get an actual because they don't have a mid card now. Like SmackDown, SmackDown's thing is SmackDown's biggest problem for a long time was they didn't have a mid card. Everybody was main event. And and now everyone now SmackDown has a nice little distribution. They got some main event guys, some mid card guys, you know. But right now, Raw, who at a moment a long time ago didn't have any main eventers, but had a bunch of mid card, they have zero main event. I mean zero right. mid card. Zero mid card. Zero. It's the Miz and the Miz. <laughs> the Miz and the Miz. That's a joke. The fact that they had a battle royale to declare a number one contender out of nowhere because they had nothing for him. Right. For contenders? None. None. <laughs> That's so stupid. It sucks. Because the Miz has defended the last time the Miz defended his belt was besides Dean was against and I love him though, but he's Slater, who's not even on Raw every week. I miss Slater. Hey, he got kids. Um <laughs> right, he needs work and he don't need to be no damn pelvis Wesley. <laughs> what the hell? Like I, I love South Paul, but at the same time, come on, y'all. And they didn't even like, explain who it was. better. They didn't explain to the audience it was. Everybody was like, who the hell is that? Right, because if you don't watch South Park, you ain't know what was happening. Like, who's pelvis, pelvis Wesley? Who the fuck is that? Who's that? Just, they were like me when we talk about that Lou. <laughs> Luke, Luke? Is it Luke Harper? Is that his name? I think that's his name. I think so. These people I've never heard of. Like, <laughs> but no, nah, the thing is. I am so happy that the U.S. Open Challenge is back. I, that's like my favorite. Yes. People are like, oh, it's because you like AJ. It's because like Cena. No, it was cool because like Cena said, it's to introduce new people. Look, it does. If it wasn't for Baron's bitch ass, Ty would have had a fantastic match with AJ. Mm-hmm. We're going to see it. We're going to see it probably next week. It's going to be great. I mean, we better see Ty again because he really, he'll be, he'll show up today and then we won't see him for four weeks. And that's unacceptable. That is unacceptable. Like the thing is, the thing is cool with Ty is I I don't want WWE to think that Ty is like Sammy, where he can just be gone for a while, come back. We were like, "Yay, it's Ty!" It's gonna get tired pretty soon. We, Listen, we, we got short. Sammy, Sammy and Ty need better. Maybe. All right, much better. Make them a tag team. Call them the Perfect Underground. <laughs> Something shit. Look, hey, Raw just throws people together to make a tag team. SmackDown can do it at least once. And SmackDown will be successful at it, I bet. Oh, yeah. I mean, look at look at the fashion police. They, right. And they, they were so random. They're like, the, they, if they're not the most over, they're close. Right. They're very you, close. You like that joke they made at the end? The joke. Did you see that segment? Yeah, with the belt and the title. Title. No, it's a belt. <laughs> He was like, oh. <laughs> Yo, I'm sorry. Fandango knocks this character out of the park. Like, he's so perfect right now. <laughs> Dude, it's great. He's so funny. <laughs> he's, he's very funny. funny. The comic timing. Even when I was listening to that podcast with him on, um, it was just so funny. Because <laughs> just listen to his voice, his timing. It. Yeah. Yeah. Because they, they, like, they were asking him, like, um, well, where'd you work besides that? He's like, well, I worked in Applebee's because, you know, I love being a server. Actually, wait, that's not true. I did it because I could eat behind the store without being caught. <laughs> like, come on. That's the that shit I would do, though. <laughs> right. He said, you know how much carbs you need to be a wrestler? Quick answer, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I love Fandango. 
Like, yeah, funny. But in all, we've been talking about wrestling, 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 wrestling. There we go. And wrestling. Just so y'all know, fun fact for all you people out there, we record our episodes on Wednesday. That's why NXT is usually not in it. Uh, we do love NXT. I definitely want to watch tonight, though. Oh, yeah. And, uh, well, yeah, we watch it. We just, you know. And uh, with that being said, one thing, because we love you people so much, when we record this, we definitely don't eat before this. We really don't. At all. And I'm getting a little hungry. Right. I was about to make some good food. I'm about to cook some whole I'm cooking something good this weekend because yeah, it's gonna be fantastic. But hey man, play yourself. Hey, you know where you can find me. <laughs> now let me stop. <laughs> um you can find me on YouTube at Haven Rain, Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, Haven underscore rain. H a e v y n r e y h n e. Mm. Mm. Did well, I spell it right this time? <laughs> well, if you ask my boss, you can also find me. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can find this show, The Comic John. Find us on Twitter. Send us a message. Something. Go to Facebook. We are also on Facebook. You can listen to us. You can listen to us on Google Play. You can listen to us on iTunes. You can listen to us on Stitcher, Podbean, all the stuff. You may have wondered why I didn't say SoundCloud. We're doing some experimental thing with SoundCloud this week. It's going to be... Mm-hmm. With SoundCloud, we have a thing where we talk about specifically paranormal things. And that's my first time in my life ever saying that word, right? That, yeah. And we want you guys to check that out. Now, don't get twisted. If you go to all the other things, you'll still see that episode. But we want that that specific... What's the word? place to be just for conspiracy <laughs> stuff so we're gonna test it out you know all that good stuff first episode is up we're talking about aliens we decided to do that for multiple reasons the main one being it's the biggest conspiracy theory you know genre i should say second uh haven here wants you to be a Halen, so he has to explain, explain the alien part of that exactly <laughs> uh we talk about great stuff we on that episode we talk about uh things that are not pg <laughs> Alien. It took an unexpected turn. <laughs> it, it really did. But my wonderful people, you can follow us, don't follow us, all the good stuff. <laughs> uh, justice for Roman. Anyway. Um, right. <laughs> goodbye, everybody. Laters. <laughs>